hello and uh, welcome. Uh, we are going to first start with uh, the two sample Z test. Once again, the variances are known. We have two samples, right? Same as what we saw in before, normal with mean mu 1 and variance sigma 1 squared. The second sample is normal with mean mu 2 and sigma 2 squared. These two samples are again independent, okay? So I, I don't write it down explicitly. When you say two samples, we'll always assume these are independent. Now, why are these things important when you actually go look at real data? And you will just have samples and you have to first check whether they are independent. If they are not independent, all these tests are not very easy to run. Okay? So, those are important to know on, or if you have to design an experiment to get samples, you have to keep in mind the number one thing you need is independence. Okay? So, there should not be any way in which one can bias the other or something. Okay? Okay, so, these are the two samples and my null hypothesis is mu1 equals mu2. Both the samples have the same mean. Like I said, you know, we had these examples, right? We're measuring IQ of two different groups of people. My, my null hypothesis is the average IQ is the same, okay? My alternative is they are not the same, okay? Uh, maybe you want to have an alternative hypothesis with which is mu1 greater than mu2, maybe, you know? And uh, maybe you want to have uh, something else like that. But, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, it depends, you know? <laughs> like, let's just first start with mu1 not equal to mu2 in this case, okay? So, I am going to use the test statistic, which is mu y bar minus x bar. This is my test statistic, which is a very reasonable test statistic to measure uh, the sample means, okay, y bar minus x bar. And since it is two-sided, I am going to reject the null, which says mu1 equals mu2, if absolute value of t is greater than some critical value c, okay. So, the same type of thing. So, at some level, you see, for every test, we do the same thing, right? We define some test statistic for which we can predict the distribution ahead of time. We will know the distribution ahead of time. That is the most important thing. You can't come up with one complicated test statistic for which you don't know the distribution. Then what will you do? You can't do any calculation with it, right? So, if you want to calculate type 1 error probability, significance level, or you want to calculate type 2 error probability or the power, you need the distribution of the test statistic. So, you better pick a test statistic for which you know the distribution, okay. So, these are all different uh, ways of viewing the same thing. So, once you do that, once you know the nature of the alternative hypothesis, you can design a very simple uh, rejection region for your null hypothesis. Once you do this, it is easy to calculate the significance level, right. So, given H0, T is a normal distribution with mean 0 and variance what I call a sigma t squared and that I know is sigma 1 squared by n1 plus sigma 2 squared by n2, okay. So, once I write it down, my rejection region is fixed, my distribution is fixed. So, what is alpha? Is probability that I reject H0. This is the case where I reject H0, right, given that H0 is true. So, given H0 is true, distribution of t is normal. Uh, so, I am going to divide by, you know, so, so mod t greater than c is the same as mod t by sigma t greater than c by sigma t. It is the same normal calculation. So, it becomes probability of norm 0, 1 greater than c by sigma t. So, if you want, you can write this as, uh, you know, maybe I will write it here, 1 minus f c of c by sigma t, as simple as that, okay. This is the famous two sample z test, okay. So, you see how easy it is to derive. Once you understand the principles behind how these tests and significance levels and other things are computed, okay. We will see the two sample F test now. So, this is a test for variances similar to uh, what we did for means with uh, two sample Z test. Once again, you have two samples. Once again, you have two independent IID samples, one from one normal distribution, another from another normal distribution. The null hypothesis now is sigma 1 equals sigma 2. The variations is the same. The alternative hypothesis is sigma 1 is not equal to sigma 2. The variances are not the same. Why, why should you worry about the variances of two things? Now, there is lots of testing equipment where you are testing, uh, you know, when you are when measuring uh, something, right? And you may have multiple instruments which measure the same thing. This could be a biological measurement on, you know, blood pressure, this, that. I mean, there is so much you measure every day, right? And you want to calibrate two machines. You want to say if this machine's uh, quality is as good as this machine's quality. And usually, the quality of a machine is measured by how the variability is. When you measure the same thing over and over again, uh, you will get different measurements actually. It is not like one measurement will give you exactly the same thing. If you change the accuracy carefully, you will see 
every measurement will give you a slightly different value and what people try to calibrate is the variance of the measurements okay so you want to see if given two measurements if the variance is same or not okay so you want to see how to test for that okay so here we can use uh, the a different test statistic okay so what can we use here for the test statistic uh, look at the calculation yes i'm going to use sx square divided by sy squared why not sx squared minus sy squared why not this guy you may ask okay it's very valid right so when we wanted to test for the mean we just took the difference between mu1 and mu2 suddenly now for this test statistic i'm saying i'm not going to take the difference but i'm going to take the ratio okay the reason is the distribution of this guy is uh, more difficult okay the distribution of the ratio is more standard it's the f distribution uh, there are no uh, i think as far as uh, i can see people don't uh, think about this in some uh, way and they don't they don't look at the distribution of this it's, it's an interesting question though maybe there is a version of these tests uh, involving this but it's very common to take a uh, ratio when uh, when there is uh, when variances are involved okay maybe the distribution of this uh, might be a little bit more tricky to handle than the distribution of this maybe right so that could be the reason okay so once again i'm going to look at the ratio okay and notice what i'm doing here i'm doing something slightly non standard right so i'm going to reject h not if t is away from 1 right so 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 this is 1 and let's say the test statistic is falling here so test statistic will be equal to 1 if null is true right so you expect it to be around 1 if null is true the test statistic should be around 1 so somewhere around here is where you expect so i'm going to reject h not if okay so there is the cr away and i'm going to reject h not again if there is 1 minus cl so this is where i will reject h not this is where i will reject h not okay i'm going to allow the cl and cr to be different okay the reason you'll see remember the f distribution if you go back to the f distribution uh the f distribution around 1 if you see around 1 if you see the f distribution is not symmetric okay so this is something important to remember about around 1 the f distribution is not symmetric okay so the probability you will have on the right about 1 and the left about 1 can be different so given this asymmetry i am going to allow for the right threshold a right critical value and the left critical value to be different if i want so the right critical value will be 1 plus cr the left critical value will be 1 minus cl and if my test distribution goes above 1 plus cr or below 1 minus cl i will end up rejecting h0 Okay, so this is a choice we make, and you'll see in in one of the example problems I do how to choose CL and CR, and this will give you one simple way to do it. There are multiple ways to design this, but this this is one uh, standard way in which we can do this. Okay, so once again, uh, the F test for two sample variance is slightly different from other ones. Uh, we don't do the difference of the two, uh, you know, uh, sample variances. We take their ratio. and then uh, look at the f distribution because we know the s uh, sx square by sy square uh, this is actually uh, the f distribution okay so how do we compute the significance level here is where the f distribution comes to our rescue okay so we design the test statistic as the ratio of the sample variances and we know that they will have the f distribution given h not sigma 1 becomes equal to sigma 2 so s x square by sy square itself will have the f distribution and notice what i'm going to do here remember the f distribution is uh, generally going to look like this right the pdf of the f distribution is going to look like this maybe the one will come here this is the you know pdf of f distribution f n1 minus 1 combined 2 minus 1 let's say right so one comes here uh, so maybe i should do uh, different colors here so let me do one color here so i have <coughs> cr here 1 plus cr okay and this area will be one area i have to worry about 
and there's another color let, let's take uh, green okay and that is this guy here let's say this is uh, 1 minus cl and then i have this area to worry about okay so uh, so i'm going to adjust so that i'm going to pick cl and cr so that this area is alpha by 2 and likewise the blue area is also is also alpha by 2 okay so that's what i'm going to pick i'm going to pick alpha by 2 to be probability that t is greater than 1 plus cr given null okay so this is the blue area okay and the other uh, uh, expression probability that t is less than 1 minus cl given h naught this is the green area okay green area is alpha by 2 blue area is alpha by 2 what is the probability that you will reject h naught given you know h naught is true it is blue plus green okay so you get alpha by 2 plus alpha by 2 and that ends up being the significance level okay so hopefully uh, that part is clear so significance level let me write that down here significance level equals green plus blue So now, uh, so this was easy enough. Think about how you got this. Okay. So, so once again, even for this two sample F test, you can repeat power calculation. Now, what is power calculation? You have to bring in an alternative particular value for sigma, right? When you do that, uh, given the alternative, the test statistic will now have a slightly different F distribution. Okay. It will be a scaled F distribution. You have to account for that carefully. So, so you have to divide the T by that whatever ratio that comes there and once you get that you will get a suitable f distribution and you can do a power calculation okay once again it's a little bit of an exercise for you don't be daunted by it try it you'll see that you'll have to do a small manipulation on the t t itself will not directly be a f distribution either t multiplied by something or t divided by something so you modify that then you will get an f distribution once you get a f distribution calculation is easy okay so given alternative hypothesis is true you might have to do that small manipulation to get the suitable f distribution okay but hopefully this was clear to you once again we saw two two sample tests one was the z test which just compared the means and we used a simple result about the uh, test statistic difference of the sample means what is the distribution now for the sample variance we had the two sample f test where you want to look at this ratio of the two sample variances now there uh, you have this complication that the you know, the f distribution gets involved it's not symmetric about one so you have to pick the right side critical value left side critical value carefully and then it's, it's easy enough to do you pick alpha by 2 for uh, one side alpha by 2 for the other side and you can uh, do the calculation this is two sided so this comes about if it's one sided it will be probably uh, easier for you and like i said uh, i will leave an important exercise to you which is calculating power against a particular alternative hypothesis for the f test uh, you have to scale the t a lot you go back and look at the previous result i showed you on two samples with normal there is the main result for the f distribution you have to use that and derive that okay so that's the two sample f test for you and then the subsequent lectures we'll look at problems we we'll look at problems for all these tests direct problems and also some data type problems and that should sort of help you reinforce the ideas thank you very much